the mother heard it. And she was just, just sniffing at this little dog, was still alive. And I ran over there, and this little puppy was just trembling in pain, and blood was coming out of its nose, and blood was coming out of its mouth, and it was just, its legs were just shivering in pain. And it was, it goes, it was piteous sound, so much pain. And the mother was just standing there watching, helpless. Her eyes were just glazed with, with, with agony and motherly love. It's amazing. So I started, I knelt down next to the dog and chanted Hare Krishna. And amazing, the mother stepped back and just honored that. I was going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. I chanted about five minutes, and then the little puppy was going, ah, and then one last flap, and, ah, and it died. And at the moment it died, the mother, who was right next to me, the moment that little puppy died, it was the most pathetic sound you could imagine. I can't imitate it so good because I'm lower than a dog, perhaps, but <laughs> the, mother, the mother just, as soon as that child just stopped flapping and just died, the mother, <laughs> and tears were pouring from her eyes <laughs> at the very moment. So I walked away, and the mother was just totally in agony, confused, licking the little child, just licking and licking and licking and licking and smelling it. I came back three, four hours later, it was still licking and smelling that child and crying. And Finally, I told one devotee, I said, you know, maybe one of the neighbors could bury it because this mother will never find any peace of mind. She just, she can't give up this dead body of her child. So they took the child away and buried it. But every day for the next week, whenever I came out, practically the whole day, the mother was just sniffing the hole and crying. Sniffing the hole where her little child died and crying. Now a dog is a very low birth in the animal scale. The cow is the highest, most developed, most evolved. To say that there is no soul, to say that there is no feeling, it is simply due to egotism and ignorance. Whatever a human being wants to justify, we could make a whole psychology and philosophy about it. I remember in 1976, Srila Prabhupada came to Nubrindaban. And he was supposed to stay for two weeks. But after maybe four or five days, it became very cold and rainy, and Prabhupada got very sick. Every day he would give his darshans, he would give class in the morning in the temple, in Bahulaban, and in the evening at the house he was staying, they set up a beautiful wooden Vyasasan that was carved by the same person that carved all of these things here. And maybe 50, 60 devotees would sit in the grass and ask him questions for about two hours every day. But one day it was very cloudy and cold and rainy, and all the devotees came, and Prabhupada was sick. So his secretary, who was then pushed to Krishna Swami, he said, Prabhupada is not going to meet anyone today because he's feeling very ill.
the devotees all were really sad, sad that he was ill, sad that they couldn't meet him because it was so rare. He'd only come once every two years and, and people were getting shifts to meet him. It's not that everybody could come every day. You know, it's like maybe once, a, once or twice during his whole visit, everyone got to actually be at that darshan. So devotees were leaving, very sad, and somehow Prabhupada looked out the window and saw the devotees leaving, and he told his, one of his entourage, Prajumana Prabhu, he said, call them back, I will meet them. So Prajumana went out and called, he went out into the cold, rainy outside, and, and Prabhupada will have darshan. And everyone was very happy and ran inside. But it happened it had to be inside the living room of the house. But Prabhupada was too sick to speak. He just told Prajumana Prabhu to read from the twelfth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam about the effects of the age of Kali. And Prabhupada said, I will just sit with the devotees and you read. But as he was reading, the, the influences that will come in Kali Yuga, Prabhupada was becoming really enlivened. I remember some of the things that were said. He said in Kali Yuga that people will not be respected and considered beautiful because of their attributes, but because of how they wear their hair. Something like that. And Prabhupada said, yes, you see the hippie movement. <laughs> People are considered, <laughs> although they're engaging in abominable activities, they're considered beautiful because they grow their hair long. He said, Veda Vyas wrote this book 5,000 years ago. At that time, there was no hippie movement. <laughs> but he knew past, present, and future. Sri Kalagya. And then there was another where it said that people will go very, very distant places to a holy place of pilgrimage just to bathe in the river without associating with holy people. That's a symptom of Kali. And Prabhupada said, yes, when I was young, I lived in Calcutta, and the Ganges is flowing in Calcutta, and people would spend so much time and so much money to go all the way to Haridwar to bathe in the Ganges without associating with holy people. And then he was talking about, you know, the, so many beautiful things. Anyways, Prabhupada told his secretary that we should leave early because this place is not good for my health. So the devotees at New Vrindavan really felt devastated. So Kirtananda Swami, he approached Prabhupada and he said, Prabhupada, if this New Vrindavan is not suitable to your health, then we'll close this whole project down and we'll start somewhere better where the, wealth, where the, where the weather is um, suitable to your health. We'll shut everything down and go to a good climate where you could live and be happy. He was serious. Would you like to hear Srila Prabhupada's reply? Srila Prabhupada's reply was very, very instructive of what was in his heart. He said, because you are protecting the cows here. This whole project is successful and I am satisfied and I will stay for the duration of the next two, I will stay for the next 10 days because I am satisfied by your success in taking care of the cows.
Prabhupada had a compassionate spirit of delivering the whole human society. And he knew that this example of cow protection was essential for his purpose. To promote the worship of God, Brahminical culture, and cow protection. That's what pleases Krishna. If we do everything else, but we don't please Krishna, we will fail. So Hiranyakashipu, he knew that as long as there's cow protection, Brahminical culture, and worship of the Supreme Lord, the Lord will protect society. And therefore, he will not be able to exploit it. So he goes right to the heart, like Kali, later on. And we see, when he tells his demoniac followers what to do, this is the orders he goes. Destroy all the Goshalas. Kill all the cows. Wherever there's yajna, stop it. Destroy Brahminical culture. Destroy the agricultural fields. Because he knew if he can attack the very heart of Krishna's presence in these forms of Brahminical culture and cow protection, then he could totally exploit and rule over the entire society, the entire universe. So we can understand how important Brahminical culture and cow protection is simply by seeing how that was the priority aim of Hiranyakashipu, to destroy it. And Srila Prabhupada, he taught us this plain living and high thinking. Actually, if we just took these lessons of Prabhupada seriously, when he spoke it and developed it, the whole world would be turning to us today. Amongst thinking people, envir environmental friendly alternatives, eco-friendly societies, positive alternatives to the whole industrialization and oil exploitation. People see that society has no real future. It's doomed if we just keep going on this way. No one was thinking about it in the 1970s and 60s, but Prabhupada was. He told us then don't use these tractors. Use the oxen and the bulls. Make them feel happy because they're valued and useful. And show the society how they're useful. Protect the cows. Grow food, nice milk. All economic problems are solved. One of our devotees, he gives lectures, he does preaching in the colleges in America. He said, this is the main thing on people's minds now, the more deep-thinking college students. Environmentalism. Positive, natural alternatives that are friendly to the environment and respectful to Mother Earth. Al Gore. It's very nice, his name is Gore. But he, <laughs> he just got Nobel Prize for his documentary on global warming. Why? Because it's so much the topic of the world. And nobody knows how to deal with it. Prabhupada knows how to deal with it. Prabhupada, his vision is the only sustainable way 
to deal with it. There is no other sustainable way. Because everything else is against the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Krishna has created material existence and he knows how it works. And he knows how it will work properly. He has given. Prabhupada emphasized this plain living, high thinking, cow protection, nice agriculture, using the bulls, using the oxen. If we just would have stuck to that, as Prabhupada instructed in the 1970s and developed it over the past almost 40 years, the world, the politicians, The students, the professors, they would be seeing the Hare Krishna movement is the model. The best possible model. Everything that we're straining our brains to understand. That was Srila Prabhupada's preaching vision. But somehow or other, this plain living high thinking We divert it. Why? Because it just wasn't the most expedient way to get things done. And I remember one community, they were working oxen and horses to plow the fields. But then they began construction, so they got a tractor. But Prabhupada said, not, Prabhupada specifically said, don't use tractors that run on oil. If you use tractors, then the cows and the bulls will become useless. The person said, we'll just use it just for some time. And then after we just, you know, clear the fields very nicely and build some nice structures, temples and houses and everything, then we'll definitely get rid of this tractor and go back to the cows and bulls. But then another tractor. And then a bigger tractor. And then bigger tractors. And bigger tractors. And bigger tractors. So there's a whole fleet of big tractors. And the cows and bulls are just, just grazing in the fields. And we're and spending huge amounts of money to buy food to feed them. And soon all the devotees forgot how to take care of cows and bulls, how to, how to use the bulls, and all the bulls were untrained. And more and more tractors. And soon we couldn't even afford the tractors. <laughs> Everything fell. Everything, all the so-called prosperity we were building, 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 just collapsed and there was nothing practically. because we weren't seeing the whole picture. The picture that Prabhupada drew for us of the ideal to save millions and millions of people within society, to save the earth. Prabhupada was such a visionary. If only we would have just followed. But it's never too late. If only we will follow by remaining very pure, by chanting Hare Krishna, by Hare Kata, hearing the glories of Krishna, by serving the Vaishnavas with sincerity and devotion and humility, by preaching this message of Krishna consciousness, and by plain living high thinking, which centers especially around Honoring Mother Earth and honoring Mother Cow. Protecting Mother Earth and protecting Mother Cow and Father Bull. It is critical to the spiritual and physical prosperity of all of humanity. And that is why Prabhupada emphasized it so strongly. Devotees were thinking, what, uh, 
you know, so, you know, we're milking some cows and we're wearing boots and we're all full of mud and how's this spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world? Let's build this and let's do this and let's go here. Didn't seem. But in many ways, that's the same mistake you can make with your children. There's no immediate results in taking care of children. So you know, just put the least priorities for the children and get and the most qualified people should be building and making money and distributing books and doing so many other things. Because there's no results in this now. But in the end, the children, the women, the cows, if they weren't respected and protected, we may have built, 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 built by making other priorities, but in the future it's inevitable. Everything must collapse. And the influence of Hiranyakashipu, which is so much ruling the world, will prevail unless we can access Krishna's mercy, Krishna's unlimited supreme power by pleasing him. And it begins with simple things like chanting your rounds sincerely, taking care of cows, and serving the Vaishnavas. Thank you very much. <laughs>